Hey guys, it's me, Andrea, with Sucks For You in Houston, Texas, and I'm back with a new video on succulent propagation. Um, it might be the most important video that you ever watch on succulent propagation, or that you watch today. So I hope it helps, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I did want to take a quick second to let y'all know I do have a website, SucksForYou.com. Um, all my links and stuff are in the video description below. Be sure to check that out. Um, if you go to the Get Help page at SucksForYou.com, I have begun offering personalized, um, care guides and custom care sheets and you can hire me you know uh, as your personal plant consultant um, there's a few different ways that I've you know set up for people to hire me and I look forward to hearing from y'all it's been a lot of fun so far and I think it's a really great uh, I think it's really nice when I was learning how to do web design and I would get stuck on a question I was like who I really want to, if I could just pay somebody right now to answer this question and move on <laughs> with my life um, I would happily do so. So that's kind of what this is, but um, plant-based, not web-based. Mm -mm. But it is on the website, so again, sucksforyou.com. Okay, let's get started. If you've tried propagating in the past but didn't have much luck, I'm going to discuss the main reasons and solutions to problems I've encountered personally and heard about from others. Whether you're seeing roots but no new leaves, leaves but no new roots, or no growth at all, Water, light, and growing seasons are the top factors in successful propagation. Once you have a clear idea of why those matter, you'll be able to troubleshoot the problems you may be running into. In my video, Succulent Leaf Propagation from Start to Finish, I demonstrated how to remove the leaves and talked about the growing stages that would follow. I'll show another demo in a moment, but first I wanted to recap on all the other ways succulents propagate, with our help and on their own. A lot of succulents, especially colanchos, make plantlets along the leaf margin. They drop off and easily root themselves in the ground or pots beneath their mamas. Succulents can also produce babies along their stems, as with my big Graptivaria Fred Ives and this crazy Echeveria Topsy-Turvy. Look at those stem babies. When you top a succulent, take cuttings or remove some of its lower leaves. This often encourages new growth to form, so that's something you can try on your own. I topped this Echeveria subsessless six weeks ago in my video on repairing stretch succulents, and here it is today. It has decent roots on the top portion and three fat babies along the stem where the leaves were removed. Hi, fat babies. They can also multiply by making offsets like with this Echeveria lola, aloes, and hoortheas. I made a video called How to Separate Succulents if you'd like to see some demonstrations on a few different types of plants. While not all succulents can be propagated by leaf, most can and I think that's the coolest thing about them. It's easy when it works and all you really have to do is sit back and watch as the little miracles grow before our eyes. Okay first, if you've tried propagating leaves with little luck, I always tell people to please try again in spring when most succulents are waking up and are more eager to grow. I bet you have much more success than starting them outside of their growing season. Mine grow two to three times faster in spring than any other time of year. Be sure to get familiar with your plant and learn about their dormancy and growing periods and adjust your timing to their natural schedule. Next, let's talk about watering propagations. You'll hear a number of differing instructions on whether to water them, mist them, put them in dirt, or even just leave them directly on a windowsill. Here I'm using an old wine box and a couple of crawfish serving trays, one with dirt and the other left empty because really all they need at first is bright and direct light and a warm dry bed to lay on. My friends, it is so important to never allow a new leaf propagation or cutting to get wet or else there's a really good chance of rot setting in through the wound where you removed it. So if you put them directly in the dirt, make sure it's dry. I like to use different trays for different phases of growth, dry dirt or no dirt for new propagations, and a tray with dirt that I can leave rooted propagations in and water them without getting the newer ones wet. You'll want to use trays that are porous and don't conduct heat or retain moisture, even if you're not watering them. This means no glass and no direct contact with plastic. Unglazed clay saucers work well, as do garden trays lined with paper. You probably have several things you can use already laying around your house, and I bet you're thinking of some right now, aren't you? Really, the only reason you may want to use any soil at first, let alone moisten it, is to offer a bit of humidity to keep the leaves fresher longer. Without roots, the only way a succulent leaf can uptake water is through the stomata, tiny surface openings that assist in transpiration of oxygen and excess moisture and intake of carbon dioxide. Unlike most non-succulent plants, the stomata on succulents close during the day to preserve moisture and open at night when water loss is reduced. 
The amount of water that can enter these openings on leaf propagations is negligible and could cause more harm in the end than good. If you can water at night, the leaves may actually absorb a bit of the water and help hydration, but make sure they're dry by morning. This isn't always possible, so avoiding the leaf itself is definitely your best bet. That's why I don't like the term misting. It makes me nervous because to me that implies squirting the whole tray with a fine spray of water and letting it sit, instead of just aiming for the roots. If you live in a humid environment, moistening the soil probably isn't necessary or it can even delay the process. It's something we have to experiment with on our own because all of our growing situations are different. In Houston, I can toss a handful of leaves on a tray of dry dirt for a few weeks and if they don't get too much sun, they're perfectly happy without any additional water, like these guys. Even when roots do form, the mother leaf is still supplying the new baby plant with all of the hydration it needs, so it isn't necessary to water unless you're in a really dry climate. I hear a lot of people ask about propagations that are growing new leaves but no roots or vice versa. It happens to me all the time too. Typically a good propagation will grow roots when it's thirsty, and that could take months sometimes if the mother leaf is still hydrated. Some propagation leaves may just produce roots and nothing else. I think this is a sign the node was damaged or defective, and the plant didn't have what it needed to grow new leaves. Sometimes watering rooted propagations may discourage new root growth. It's like teaching a baby to walk by offering them the goal of a toy or a reward. If you just give it to the baby, why should it try to stand up, let alone put forth the effort to walk? And if a propagation only has a few roots, but it's still getting regular ample waterings, why should it make more roots? Growth takes a lot of energy, and without incentive, whether it's a cookie or the need to survive, most of us prefer the minimal effort route, plants included. It's not necessary to bury the roots, they're programmed to do that on their own. But if you're worried about them drying out, you can nudge a bit of soil over them, or prop the leaf up with a small rock to help direct the roots down into the soil. So when should you water propagations? It's time to water when the mother leaf has begun to shrink and dry out, but even then, you only want to dampen the soil around the roots. Over time, the main leaf will fall off and you'll begin to treat the propagation like any other tiny succulent. Have fun with your new little plants, but protect them from too much light and water sparingly until they become more established. Speaking of light, propagations are not as tough as full garden plants, and even with a good root supply, they're going to be more sensitive to heat and sun. I keep mine fairly shaded and let the natural light move around them until they show signs of growth. Then I ease them into a spot where they'll get more light, but not direct sun. Once they start forming leaves, they'll need more light to build thick stems and stay compact. You may have seen some leaf propagations with long necks that can't support their heads. They're showing you they need more light, but build up to it so you don't cook them. Wind also helps strengthen stems, so if you're growing indoors, you might want to put a fan on them to give them a workout. Now let's talk about growth rate. After I removed the leaves from my Echeveria subsessilis and the Echeveria agavatis in my succulent repair video, I let them dry in an empty cardboard tray and then moved them into the dirt tray after I started seeing roots. Everyone wants to know how long it will take for signs of new life to show, but it varies from plant to plant, leaf to leaf, and season to season. Here's what about six weeks of growth looks like on the agavoides. I wasn't even really sure I'd get any growth because these leaves are harder to remove without damaging them. I know they wouldn't have been as quick to grow in any other season because of their natural growing cycles and climate challenges, like it being too hot or too cold. Temperatures definitely affect their growth rate, and my succulents are happiest when the thermometer is between 70 and 85 degrees. If it's too hot, they'll reserve their energy by slowing their growth. Too cold, then they'll assume it's not the right time to grow yet. Just like people, if you live in a warmer zone, your plants will adjust to tolerate more heat, but be more sensitive to the cold. In summary, the main components of successful propagation are all intertwined. Starting at the top, growth rate is fastest during a plant's natural growing season, typically spring and fall when the temperatures are ideal. Next, you want good light, but not direct or full sun for too long to avoid cooking or drying up the leaves. Finally, introducing water too soon or letting leaves stay wet in direct light can cause rot or scorched leaves and oversaturating the soil in a propagation tray can encourage fungi and bacterial growth, which also causes rot. And ain't nobody got time for that. And that's all for now. I hope this video helps you figure out why you may have had any problems with propagation in the past, and I'd love to hear about your previous and current experiences and experiments, because we all learn from each other's failures and triumphs. So please drop a line in the comments below. And if you have questions or ideas for future video topics, let me know. 
Also, consider ordering a custom care guide if you'd like me to help you troubleshoot any specific issues or just to help you meet your plant-based goals. Remember to read the description under Show More for more information and links to where all you can find me online. And please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Now get out there and pluck some leaves, y'all!